We are back. Thank you all for tuning in. Welcome to TLBX Streams Presents. TLB, the Lunchbox Podcast, or TLBX Podcast, Season 1, Episode 11. I'm your host, Greg M., a.k.a. The Remix, Founder, CEO, Editor-in-Chief of the Lunchbox Publications, and I'm here with... What up, y'all? Matt Green here, uh, News Aggregator and Social Media Manager. Hello, hello. It's me, Big John, the... The lovable scamp. I don't know. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? Hey, hey, he he did his best with what he had, and that's what he yes. wanted. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I, I, okay. Speaking of which, how y'all doing? Aerosol here, aka the Slytherin Queen, aka still disappointed. Pokemon Master. <laughs> okay, you two, you and Big John, like, okay, before we get into the next topic, is there any way to save this game's multiplayer and network features? That so like why come better? Ah, they they just they they just they there are a lot of updates that need to be done. Yes. Um. Yeah, we're gonna talk all things like be, like mm-hmm. one big one big overhaul update. Um. Yeah. Like, okay. Do, do it some kind of some kind of new new feature functionality with the Wycom itself. And um, but I, I that we don't know, have to pay thirty dollars extra for as well. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. Yeah. And like I said before, if it's going to happen, it'll, it'll likely happen during one of those two DLC updates. But we'll see, we'll see what happens then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then beyond that, they need to make some of the mythical Pokemon a little bit more accessible. I get that they're mythical, see, but you, you know see, what? Y'all just what doing, doing too much. But we got to wait till like fall because because we'll be able to go into the dens in the, yeah. the second update. The second update. Tell DLC. them again. What's up, Adam? Thank you for tuning in, my man. But now if you got a computer. <laughs> different adam yo matt what do you got for us man in the news <laughs> um so our next topic is technically a dual topic but also something we can kind of talk casually casually about uh we had a couple of anniversaries this week so for, first we start talking about uh the switch itself uh so th- this this past tuesday I believe, yeah this past tuesday was the uh third anniversary of the switch itself uh I'll, I mean, I'm definitely a big advocate for this system um, after going to the preview, preview event way back when. So, mm-hmm. you know, just, just, just want to uh, uh, quickly talk about, you know, you know how, how far the system is coming and what we want to see next with the system. Um, so any, any, anything you guys want to uh, start with in particular? Um, I guess, see, this is sort of where I wish... Um, Jennifer was here, our very own J2 Noir, our very own writer for Lunch Pass Publications. She's safe back from Florida from her vacation. She had a great time. Uh, I was there with her and her uh, husband when they did the the Nintendo Switch event uh, midnight release over in uh, Gaithersburg. Mm-hmm. And very cool. I, I, I never expected to, how should I say, since like I was done working at GameStop and I was asked. You know, telling myself I'm I'm gonna be uh, eh, I'm not gonna get a new console anytime soon. But ever since the trailer was released, I was like, okay, I'm listening. I'm interested. When does this come out? So, I mean, when they finally released the trailer and for, for, uh, first footage of the Legend of Zelda back in that E3. I said, this is definitely coming out for the Switch. There's no way. And then they announced it. I was like, yep, this is it. This is the game. <laughs> this is going to be the launch title I'm going to get before anything else. And, of course, I'm going to get Smash for it. And, you know, having that feature and capability of uh, playing wherever you go, at the same time connecting to your TV back and forth, and, you know, traveling, it 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 amazes me because it it they are like... Nintendo, I consider them as the king of handhelds because everyone in here Absolutely. and whoever's also listening if you also whoever's listening in chat or listening to this replay has started with probably the game boy if not maybe the the, the um the game gear hey as long as you had a, a handheld this the switch sort of reminds you of that feature but only this time we didn't look at, at it as a uh and the next uh nintendo quote-unquote nintendo 3ds times two whatever like it was the, an actual <laughs> console that you can take anywhere and right. it's the the port the portability of it is just it's even it's easier 
too. And I, they, they took it to the next level. And I'm not also talking about people with the fancy computer PC handhelds and stuff like that. That sort of doesn't count because that's like on a different level. But Nintendo themselves, especially when it comes to the console wars and stuff, they actually did it first. So I, I have to get tip off my hats to them and stuff. And a funny story, and speaking of, a.k.a. Larney, a.k.a. Larnus XD, a.k.a. Larnus Plays, a.k.a. Damn it, Matt, you did this, a.k.a. <laughs> nonsense. Um... <laughs> Didn't even do this no, no, man, because, <laughs> man, no. Uh, you really walked into that one, Greg. But the thing yeah. is, like, it's hard because she has all these multiple nicknames, too, as well. But um, I remember she was mad because I finally shared the opening screenshot of The Legend of Zelda. And I remember saying, it begins. And she commented back mm-hmm. on the picture on Instagram I hate you. <laughs> I was like, "Yo, you, you salty!" Like, because you know she was she was in college, and I was like, "You're you're there in college. Don't be like that." I remember picking her up, and I brought the switch with me, and this was after work, and I was like, and I was like, "I got the switch. Hey, you gotta pick up your sister." Okay, I'll bring the switch with me. So, Larny, already in front of her dormitory, all her stuff was outside. She gets in the car. She doesn't help me put her stuff in the car. She immediately grabs the switch and starts making her own profile, making her own game Priority. save file for for legend. Oh, it's not over. For legend, I was like, okay, Larney, can you? Oh yeah, can you put that in the trunk for me? Okay, thanks, bye. I was like, this girl is serious. This girl is serious, and, and I was like, okay, siblings, I, bro, siblings. Nah, man, bump that. Anyways, so. I was driving home on I-95. I was like, yeah, okay. Yo, uh, how's everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want to get something to eat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to go home? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, she was already gone. Because I think she was looking at the first cutscene already. Or, or she was already meeting. I mean, the that... fact that you even tried to have a conversation with her is, um, like, admirable. Hey, I tried. Okay, <laughs> moving on. Anyways, when we got home, she literally got out of the car and went straight to her room. Close the door, boom, doesn't come out. That's when, you, that's when you lost all switch rights. Oh no, yeah, yeah, pretty much. But um, it, what, time. what's funny? <laughs> shush, we're not gonna yeah. we're not gonna go there. <laughs> Anyways, no, nah, y- y'all need to stop it. Um, what I'm trying to share is because I know this is sort of like an anniversary story because it it sort of tells me like who, no matter who I give it to, they were comfortable playing with playing with the handheld console with the switch itself because. You know, it's a different, but at the same time, it had that Nintendo feel, nostalgia to it. Does that make sense? Yeah, because absolutely. Larnie, you know, she, it was her first time playing it, but she was getting used to it. And I remember when she came out, it felt like she was playing Majora's Mask when we got it for the N64 again, like back in the day. And she was like, she got in her room at 1 p.m. We got home at like 1 she did, and jokes aside, yeah, she did help put the stuff in. And then she said, okay, I'm done with stuff. I'll go play. And I was like, hey, enjoy it. Go ahead. Because I wanted you to. Because, you know, college is yeah. hard, folks. It's hard. Yeah, yeah. So I said, go ahead. Go ahead. Your midterms are done. Go play. Relax. So she didn't come out of her room. She did just to get water and take a small breaks, but only like 15 to 30 minute breaks. And then, you know, use the bathroom, all that stuff and eat. Then she'll go back to her room, close the door. And I'm like, holy crap. She gets out for dinner at 8 p.m. She says, oh, man, I'm going to take a break. So it's a charge, right? So how is it? Oh, you know, I got like eight, nine health capsules. I already beat the first rock. But I was like, wow, this girl went ham. She mm-hmm. went yep. in. That's and dedication. The th- and what, and you're gonna, you guys are going to laugh at this, but she, the rest of her spring break, she did. She, she went out with friends and stuff and caught up, but. Most of the day, besides doing, of course, the small household chores and laundry, nonstop Legend of Zelda. Like, the, I yep. think she beat it before she went back. And I was very proud and happy for her. But oh, wow. it, it brought, she said, like, it's a different concept. And mm-hmm. it, it just reminded her, like, when we got the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Because that was, I, I know for us, I know a lot of people say, hey, Ocarina of Time. I get it, but for us, for my me and my siblings, Majora's Mask is what, where what really took us over because like we loved the storyline at the same time. Like there was no, 
you know, besides fierce deity Link and all that stuff, there was no grown up Link. There, there was it, it was just a kid with multiple masks and it was fun. Right. But for this one, Larnie was just amazed and stuff. And man, I think from that point on, that's when I started getting more games for it, like. Of course, super. Of course, Mario Kart. Trying to get the belt back, <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, you know, damn it, Aerosol. Uh, excuse I me. Mean, what? Technically, technically, Matt has it. Oh, that's right. If we're if we're all being honest. Yeah, it's Matt has it. I'm not. No, I gave up. Anyways, um, PO Rocket <laughs> and P uh Rocket uh, PO PO Rocket Tetris Battle. Yes, that game is. I have that also. I have. Mario Tennis Aces. I remember me and my cousin, my my uh, nieces and nephews played that. Having the ability to just have the Switch itself being on the kickstand and using the small controllers to play. And I think last but not least, um, it was funny on that same night picking up the console because I told Denise, Mahal, you take it. What do you mean? You take it and set up for me because it is 3 in the morning. I don't have time. I got work in 5 hours. You take it and set it up, and I'll come over after work and we'll talk. And we ended up playing uh, some cool games and stuff, and it, it, it was fun. Like, having the ability to just have one, two controllers at the same time, and I don't know. I mean, I can't wait till, of course, Animal Crossing comes out. I wish nothing but the best for Nintendo, especially to... Oh, man, like... I consider them still the kings of the handheld industry, and they're doing a hell of a great job with this console. And happy birthday, Switch. So, I know my stories have been zigzagging a lot, but it's just so many good, good, fond memories with the with the console. And um, I'm still having memories with it as well, especially with Korg Music Maker. Matt knows what that is. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm like... One finish track on there and a bunch of like small ideas. Let's do a mashup, bro. Let's go. Let's go, man. I'm telling you. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. All right. I mean, who's next to share their story? Because again, nothing but good, fun memories with this, with the handheld console. So, yeah. Like, no. I don't mind going next. Yeah, yeah. sure. I don't mind, go- I don't mind going yeah, next. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Like, uh, I mean, handhelds have always been a really big part of my life. I, I love anything that I can, like, shove in my face as opposed to being far away from mm-hmm. me, like, on the screen. So, like, I was actually a late bloomer uh, to, like, the um, PlayStation, uh, N64, and things like that. I liked watching other people play it more than I liked playing it myself. Um, but there was something about the Game Boy. There was something about Game Boy Advance. Um, I tried the Wii U. Yeah, that didn't work out too great. Um, <laughs> uh <laughs> <laughs> you know but like the 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 3ds the ds all that stuff um and then the switch coming out I, I i waited a year for the switch because i just wanted to make sure that they knew what they were doing with it first and foremost and that uh, it was a bit pricey so i was like i was really lucky that um my brother decided to give me an early christmas gift um to because you know he was he was helping me out uh financially to, to replace my playstation because for some weird reason my playstation just decided to die on me like for three weeks straight and every single time i would re-get a new, um get a new one same thing would happen it's like ah oh, what's the point of this warranty if i keep getting broken playstations and he's like here you go take this money get yourself a new one i'm like you know what i'm not going to do that <laughs> thanks for the money <laughs> i said thanks wow. for the money i'm not going to do that i'm going to keep getting a refurbished one to see which one sticks and with the extra money i got myself a switch and then i come home and he's just like you got two consoles and i'm like uh you weren't supposed to find out about that but you did. And I wow. Love you. <laughs> Jeez, <Hashtag> best. Siblings. <laughs> Hashtag siblings. Um, wow. You know, in the end, he was proud of me because I've had this PS4 now for almost a year and it's doing well. And uh, my Switch is fantastic. I love it. I think the first game I played on it wasn't even. I've been playing a lot of indie games. And I think that's been um, one of the one of the most enjoyable things for me about it is that I've been exposed to a lot of indie publishers um, and a lot of things that I feel, a lot of games that I feel like I wouldn't have uh, known about, I wouldn't have uh, heard about if it wasn't for how they have um, programmed the Switch, how they've, how they've, uh, you know, put the store together and made it accessible for folks who aren't part of these big publishing names. They're not 
Ubisoft. They're not um, EA games or anything like that. They're just like these little folks who are just like, you know what? I love video games. I want to share this specific type of story with you. Here you go. Um, my first game was uh, My Big Sister, which is like a kind of mm. horror thriller game. Very sad. <laughs> I don't know why I keep like, I, I, I'm, I'm attracted to sad stories. It's like the craziest thing. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm a masochist of this. Um, Angst is my friend. But it was one of the first games I played and I just, I loved it. I loved it. I, I appreciate that a lot of these indie folks are bringing back the kind of like two-bit um, visualization. I think that that's a lot of fun as well. Um, you've already heard me gush about Stardew Valley. I will calm myself down and not gush anymore. Um, <laughs> and even though I was hesitant, uh, playing Pokemon um, Shield has been so much fun. And even though I'm a very disappointed Pokemon Master, I'm still having a blast. Um, so I'm just, I'm really happy with it. I, I think this is just continuing, um, not just the nostalgia, but it's continuing the love that I have for handhelds. And um, I hope that everyone else feels the same way, basically. That's what's up. All right, all right. Um, Big John, anything you want to you want to share? Uh, uh, I like to switch. Uh, I unfortunately was one of the people that had like a drift. <laughs> Ooh. When I got it, uh, oh no! Not immediately when I got it. It started drifting after I got into uh, Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate, which is oh which is, yeah, it's, it's a really good game. And I ended up getting a, like a friend of mine. Shout out to Jeffrey. He tried to he tried to fix it for me, but it didn't work. So he just said, "Man, I'll just get you another Joy-Con." So that's why I have a a blue one because <laughs> oh, I had like cool. a, I had a standard Switch, and I was like, "No, I want some. I want a splash of color." So I just got this random blue one. Like, <laughs> but I I strategically got it. I was gonna wait like the. Uh, I was gonna wait because I knew I was gonna get it with Splatoon too because on the Wii U I was just the best roller this side of the Mississippi, you know what I'm saying? Like that's what's up, man. We, nobody we touched get, me with that splat roller. <laughs> we need to get back to on that. <laughs> yeah. Yo, you know, yeah, we have a clip of Big John going in on that um game because this dude had the paint hammer and everything like that. He was like, "Where are you going? Where are you going, fool?" Oh, and he yeah. just—I was like, "Oh my <laughs> god!" If I could just bring it up, it. it <laughs> this man went straight. Mm, I was like watching Vig John, and it was great though because, um, you know, Vig John. Vig John knows about this because I texted him right, like during the because we he was streaming Splatoon two, and I texted him, "Yo, you better do good because." Dad and Evan are Dad and Dad and Bima are watching. Also, he was like, "Are you kidding me?" I was like, "No, no, they're watching you." And Pops was like, "Okay, Big John, let me see what you can do." I was like, "Oh man!" So we saw Big John get like a double oh, kill, awesome. and and I remember Tita Heidi came over and she was watching too. She was like, "Is Big John winning?" Yes, she is. Yes, he is. Oh, she was clapping like for joy and stuff. And Evan was like, and when you lose, Big John, Evan would get mad. He's like, what did he lose? I was like, yo, oh, no. And he was like, what did he lose? Evan, he tried. Look, he's number one on the leaderboards in his team. And he's like, why isn't he doing anything? I was like, he is doing something, Evan. Like, he's like, you got to give yeah, him so a... So soon as been Nintendo's, like, hypest um, esports game in me, I, I want to see what he poured out of it. That is not Smash. That is not yeah, true. Smash, yeah. um, and or Mario Kart because Mario Kart. Oh my gosh, people these days keep still competing them those well, times, I, you know. I, I would consider Mario Kart like like part of the esports ring. Really? What? Do you know how competitive Double Dash was in Otakon? I know you I'm, remember I'm, that. I know I'm you aware, remember really that. <laughs> Man, these people be lighting up like, all right, team up with your buddy. I'm like, oh, man, sh about to go down, son. Mm -hmm. I remember me and Chris, shout out to Takiwara, we would watch these people go in on, what's that? That 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 circle track that's like five laps? You know what I'm talking about, baby right, part. man? Yes, man. Oh, baby people part. be doing dirty stuff like ramming people on the wall, not just throwing the blue shell or ramming people against bomb bombs that have been thrown. I was like, man, people are going to hell for this. Come on, people. Come on. Um, I'm waiting for my Metroid. I'll show these people what's up. Let's go. I was awesome back in the Hunter's days. All right, next. Someone go next. I'm sorry. 
Next. I mean, it was my turn. You talking about some next? Jeez. You oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, continue. <laughs> I know yeah, you got continue excited. Big job. But... <laughs> continue. But no, but but big jump for reals though. Like you, you streaming Splatoon two and yeah, Matt. Sometimes you, you guys definitely took it to the next level for our company because it's very rare for us to also stream Switch games. That's what I'm trying to say too. So mm-hmm. yeah. Man, I'm telling you, as soon as uh, okay, so as soon as Dungeon Drafters comes out, I'm gonna stream that. Yes. Already. Yes. I saw that on Kickstarter. I was on Kickstarter farting around looking through the games. And I was like, hold up, what's this? It looks nice. Nice little thing that's going. It ain't going to come out till like next year, which is fine because, you know. What game is this? I don't, it's, called, it's called Dungeon Drafters. Dungeon Drafters. Uh, permission to show the trailer, Big John, as you describe it. Yeah, it looks it looks so good. Like, I can't wait till this comes out. They just. They going through all these stretch goals. They just unlocked a brawler. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, do I still got it open? Of course I don't. Hold on. I did screenshot send it to Greg. But um, I, I assume it has a switch tier? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They just unlocked that today. Yeah, they did unlock the, oh, the switch right. tier. So. I, I, I can go look at this now. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, showing, I'm showing the trailer now as we speak. It's very it cool. Like it, look, it looks fun. Oh, wait a minute. What is it? Oh. Yeah. It's I'm, like. I'm, I'm, I'm getting like a. A strategy, Necro Dance survive from this. Yeah, and it makes this like card battling also, which is pretty, which is pretty dope and interesting too. So, did they announce? Oh, well, uh, did they did they announce any multiplayer features yet, Big John? Or that's too early to unlock right now. I'm not sure, but I'm like they blowing. Th- if it's a stretch goal, they're gonna hit it because they blowing through these stretch goals quick. They like yeah, they're they're really oh, going through quick. Stretch goals already in like two days. Yeah, it's it's beyond their d- double their goal now. If I can just show the, uh, the um, the Kickstarter itself. Yeah, the Kickstarter like yeah. it's twenty seven thousand out of twelve thousand. So Ooh. yeah, that is yeah, definitely yeah, double yeah, their it, goal. It, it's getting made. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had to I had to jump on that. <laughs> I was like, I gotta get me this game. Did you get blocked on Twitter? What? <laughs> Oh, no, no, he's talking about the Camille one. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. Oh, yeah, it's today, actually. What? The, 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 the Kickstarter from 101, it finished today. I will be oh, right okay. back. Matt, you will host the rest of the show. I will be back, back. <laughs> but, yeah, like, uh, I've been having a lot of fun on the Switch. Like, I've been down with handhelds. Like, I'm still trying to collect all Nintendo handhelds. I kind of want to, uh, I recently, I'm recently, but I previously got a backlit Game Boy, so I kind of want to get a backlit Game Boy Color. Mm-hmm. Nice. Backlit Game Boy yeah. Advance. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm surprised you didn't. I'm, I'm surprised you didn't go out and look for the, uh, the the Japanese um Game Boy Light. At that point, you know, I I have been looking around, but ever since I saw the one post of somebody was like. Man, I ordered a uh, Game Boy Light, and I, all I got somebody sent me a Game Boy Pocket. I was like, I, don't, I can't trust these people. I gotta, oh, I gotta make sure I pick oh. the right one. <laughs> and I really do want that Game Boy Light. Like I really do. Yeah, I yeah. I need to add that to my collection. And Hypercan, I was waiting on them to drop their little Hyper Boy or whatever they wanted to call it, but they ain't never. I don't know what they're doing, but uh. No, I, I I've actually tried to contact Hypercan like a couple of times for you, and I I don't know what's going on over there. Like. I don't want to drop. Don't give me something on analog right now. Oh man, yo! Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I want that too. Oh, like no. I'm looking at that. Like, come on, man. Like all the season they've been doing lately. I'm just a handheld hoarder. <laughs> so I definitely had to get the switch. I'm definitely gonna get a switch light because I know they was like, yeah, yeah, you supposed to take your switch on the go, man. This switch not leaving the house. I'll take the switch light out. <laughs> I don't know about you, but when I got the switch, it was bigger than I thought it was gonna be. I don't know why I thought it was gonna be smaller. Oh, I don't know, man. I kind of get you, like, that, and that was actually part of the reason why I wanted to go to the, the original preview event when I got the tickets, because mm-hmm. um, cause that, that was immediately a mega break for me, and I was like, you know, you know, I wanted to go in there and see, like, the size of this thing, and, yeah. you know, you know, if going back and forth between console and handheld was as seamless as they kept making, making it out to be, I was like, yeah. okay, you got me. Yeah, and I had watched a video talking about how, during the process, like, at first, the Joy-Cons were connected by magnet. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm glad they changed that because that yeah that might have that would fall off real quick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that that idea wasn't gonna fall through. I I'll I'll agree with that. I mean I, mean, I get it. You know you know every every console that we play play with has gone through like a multitude of, of like weird prototypes and stuff. Yeah. 
Can what? we say the boomerang controller for the PlayStation oh, that was so 3? Ugly. <laughs> it was so ugly. Real talk though, I, I do still want to play with boomerang controller. Are you I kidding me, man? Like, oh my god. how it feels, yeah, but it's just. Ugh. Part, part, part of me think, like, you know, you know, they had to go through a good amount of tough to make it feels comfortable in somebody's hands. So, like, yeah. So I'm looking at it like, how comfy is that thing? Like, like maybe I'm tripping. So like, do it oh, got some grips in the back or something? Like, cause I, the thing, like, I don't think I've ever seen the, the back yeah. of that controller. Look, all I know is that if it came out, right, people would have been uh, real delicate with it. Because if you get mad and throw the controller, it might come back and smack you in the eye. Yeah. <laughs> like, if it actually worked like a boomerang, it might have reduced some controller rage breaks, you know? Because they didn't want to get hit with that. No, it'll, it'll, it'll cut down on all that, all that rage online. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, uh, I still, still want to just have another Switch, so I'm definitely going to. I'm waiting. I'm going to still hold out. I think they are going to drop a, a Animal Crossing Switch Lite. Like, I, they get, come on now. Okay, well, I'm like, that's what I want to bring up because. I was with Denise the, tonight, and you know she sort of got into a rant with the with the light colors, and she did say if Persona gets a light version release, I am buying that. But watch, because she's very Persona, very she's very hesitant to buy it right now because she she doesn't want to jinx it. Like once I get it, they're gonna announce something, so she's gonna be waiting. Which brings me to the fact that she, sorry guys, but she won't be joining us. In two weeks for the mm-hmm. Animal Crossing uh, ah, stuff, I know, dude. Right. I know it. It's it stinks. It's bad, but uh, I I don't know what else to tell you. Sorry, guys. But um, no, I mean I respect it. I respect yeah. it. Yeah, cause uh, she's. It's funny because um. Oh, and shout out, and I know off topic, but it's sort of related to the sort of the next me story I'm gonna share. But uh, NCT one two seven, the K pop boy band, has dropped their latest album Neo Zone and it's in a yellow yellow uh, cover in a yellow case, right? She made fun of it. She said, Watch me and I'm gonna end up with the Nintendo Switch Lite N version, which is pretty much the yellow Switch wow. light, and I was like, "Wow, Denise! Oh, of course you would." Go ahead. Yeah, if that's the case, if she gets the sticker, <laughs> she might as well put in make it the NCT version. I'm like, "Oh no, it's not. Like, no, it's look, not." Look, I do like that Coral one they about to drop. Look, all I need is to give me is a Majin decal, and I got the Majin Blue Switch. Oh, <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> I'll be fine. Shoot. Can you make custom cases like you can? People who can change it. I know, yeah. like, I'm, oh, see, oh yeah. Maybe if, maybe we yeah, might you, convince yeah, Denise with that. Maybe you mean, we can kind of like how I have my um my my custom jury tones. Yeah, like you can and, change. Yeah, there are there are people um including that same guy I showed you before who do custom mm-hmm. cases for the switch body itself. Okay, that, that that's what I was gonna ask. Not the control the joy cons, but um yeah, the but, bodies. Yeah, but... I don't know. Okay, shout out real quick. Hey Tanisha, does it, does a guy do uh modding for the switch light as, as well? Switch light, yeah. Hmm. That's a good question, too. Stickers, okay. So, okay. so nothing not, not like like major yet. Okay, well. Which is, which is reasonable. And, and it is it's not bad. Yeah. Anyway. But, we'll um, see what happens. But yeah, yeah for, the, for the regular Switch, though, you, guys, you can find tons of different modifications and uh-huh. customizations at this point. I really want I, to get mine changed up. Like at this point, honestly, it just comes down to how much you want to put down on that customization. True. That's true. So true. Well, but, Matt, um, how about you, man? I mean, it's three yeah, years, yeah, dude. Like, yeah. yeah I, I know. I'll, I'll try to make mine quick so I don't drown on too no, long. No, no, you're but... good. You're good, dude. We we all had our stories, man. You have yeah. to have one yourself. I, a, a story, not re- well, actually, I do have do have one uh, one fun story that that was kind of surprising. So it was, I believe, a. A year or two years ago, we were um, make uh, me and Tanisha were making a regular trip up uh, upstate to her family up in New York. It was two years ago, twenty eighteen, and um, uh, went up our bus. We took took a mega bus, and uh, un- unfortunately, like halfway through the uh, through the trip to the New Jersey Turnpike, we hit a flat tire, and so we, oh so we, no, so everybody was fine. We're all good and stuff. But um, it was, it, was, it was really cool because like like during the ride we like in the seat to the uh to the side of us we see this one guy over there who's definitely playing on the switch. We're trying to find a, a good 
opportune moment to, to like reach yeah. out and see what he's playing and stuff. Um, so so at, at the time we're out, we're all we're all just chilling and um, fun, uh, I looked over and see guys playing Mario Kart and, and we just said, hey, want to do a quick race real quick? And we've got some races in. That one. is awesome, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, I, I, once again, I, I definitely dominated. Oh. That's how I do. <laughs> All right, yeah, the belt is not vacant anymore for the Lunchbox publication <laughs> staff. It is now belong to Matt. I'm sorry, Aerosol. It's gone. I'm sorry, I don't Aerosol. know why you're apologizing. I'm the one who said he had it to begin with. Yes, you did. I'm telling. I'll, I'll be honest with you, Matt. If like once uh, he once the belt once it hits to the bottom, I'm just gonna say I'm just gonna put the controller down and just leave. Like where are you going? Nope, I'm, I'm done, man. No, nope. I'll, I'll I'll just say what you know. Whenever, if ever, we get an announcement for a. Mario Kart Nine, like we'll, we'll we'll start with a clean slate there, to make it fair for everybody. I want the Crash Bandicoot belt so because generous. someone would thought she so was generous. gonna be awesome in that game. She knows who I'm talking about. It's not that I think I'm gonna be awesome; it's that I know I'm gonna be awesome. That's I just it. Don't have the That's game it. Right now. That's it's it. Totally different thing. Now, see, okay. I'll give you Crash because because I actually I actually for the very first time played um. Crash Team Racing during CapsuleCon. I was not used to how the, the drifting was. Oh, Dude, really? drifting is oh, tough. Yeah, and, it, drifting is, so oh my gosh. It's different. You think, you, you think you're going to use the Mario Kart way? No. Not in this you one, bro. Have, no. Idea what you're no. It's actually so funny talking to people who've never played the game before who are so used to Mario Kart and then they play it and they're like, this drifting sucks! This is horrible! And I'm just sitting there like, this is literally the whole point of the game. It's just <laughs> drifting. And like, running into other people and then just Keep going. <laughs> Aerosol, be honest. How many times have you been spamming uh, jump while you were playing back in oh, the place? Oh, man, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> oh, I'm pretty I, sure I, I like, broke the button every single time, <laughs> like, in any of the controllers. Like, you just have to keep it in that button and, oh and hope for the best. Like, jump is jump is your lifesaver. Otherwise, yeah, you're Oh, my so God. Crazy. You're so done. You're so done. And you need to know your shortcuts in the game because the game has so many. It It's ridiculous. The, but... the shortcuts, the random, like... Oh, there's so it's so fun. It's so fun. But I that, love, um, what yeah, else? I've, yeah, dude. I've I've gotten like t- um, tons of life out of the Switch. Yeah. It it was very helpful for me because considering you know uh, working a lot and a lot of the oh, yeah. major console games that I do want to play, not having a chance to like um, really get through all that much. So being able to have have the Switch and having you know console quality stuff with me all the time has been uh, a lifesaver. I'm actually looking through my profile here seeing like all the hours i've put into some of these games 25 hours under breath of the wild here dang <laughs> yo 225 Wait. hours on uh monster Hunter generations which yeah big job we, we need to get back on that oh yeah i put like Cause, cause, too many hours in that game yeah, I, we, we need to, we need to go fight that um that, that chameleon Oh, I hate it, but I, I will fight it with you. <laughs> Chameleons, Chameleons is garbage because that boy he turned invisible and will poison you. Like, it's... oh no, poison! Dude. Oh, I didn't know about yeah. that. Oh, jeez. Oh, like <laughs> Chameleons is a trip. Um, I think the most yeah. hours I've seen here is yeah, Puyo Puyo Tetris because I always play Tetris against the computer and stuff like that. And funny story, um. I was playing it before class started when I was uh, back at UMUC, and my teacher was like, "Is someone playing Tetris?" <laughs> I was like, "Oh crap!" <laughs> and, and he was he was like, "Put it away, put it away, Greg." I was like, "Sorry, sir." He was like, "He was like, it's just a demo." I was like, "Well, how does he know about this?" Hmm. <laughs> he called out the exact game like, "Just put it away for the day." Yeah, I was like, "Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sir." And she, and he was like, "He was like, put it away. It's just a demo." I was like, okay, so I did, so it was fun, but yeah, I think it's safe to say, unless Matt, sorry, unless you have another, um, oh, no, story. Just, just go, go through the hours here, um, uh, yeah. I surprisingly have 200 hours in Smash, and I didn't realize I put that much Oh, well, well, yeah, dude, I mean, I, I, that's my most played game, too, because, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I think it's safe to say, um, all of us in here, and I know our, the, the, the people who aren't, who aren't with us, uh, who are, like, or with us in this episode tonight we all like for the past three years we either gotten like either last year or the year before or on release we have good stories with it like nintendo i think that's the goal of nintendo obviously it's a money thing no, but to be fair pushing the mice out away like we're enjoying ourselves with this handheld like it was oh, obviously a slow start in the beginning but later it got better 
And I know there's some adrift issues and stuff like that with the controller and such, but... Yeah, I'm not going to say the Switch is perfect. There's still yeah. some things here and there that I, I, I'm i looking forward to them, like, upgrading. Like, you know, we, I, we still need folders for this thing because I have way too many Yes, games. yes. Oh, my gosh. And, and, you know, themes. Like, come on. Black and white, does it? Come on, dog. And Earthbound! Who said that? Who said that, man? I mean, whoever <laughs> said Earthbound, I mean, yeah, I mean... But no, that, that's, also, that's also a good point, actually, with the... um. The the, uh-huh. the slow drip feed of the um the, the classic games like they're like when it comes when it comes to the amount of games they put out per release like it's far worse than it was on the, the in the Wii and the Wii area with the virtual console like oh so, yeah we know, we know those games are going to be able to run so like I don't I don't know what they're waiting on like it's it's, it's kind of maddening in, in, in that essence honestly um Metroid that's it. That's all I'm going to say. Continue, Matt. <laughs> oh, wait, are you talking about Prime? Yes. Oh, yeah. That, 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 that's a whole other issue, though. I'm not going to talk anymore. That's it. I'm done. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, the system is not perfect, but it's, it's been, like, amazing for me these past three years. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and more ports, more great games, please. Metroid and Earthbound. I'm done. Okay. I just want another Gen 2 remake. Oh, dude, yes. I would love <laughs> to see a Gen 2 remake. As long as long as it's not a Let's Go remake. Yes. You see, you yes. see, but let's you see what Let's Go. Like, I love that Let's Go is like right in between the first game and the second game. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I know I keep making. I, I know I keep making fun of. Uh, metroid uh, but i would like to see the re- a remaster of prime one two and three because i enjoyed those on the gamecube and i know so there's, been a, there's been a constant rumor going around and i want but um this has been word going around that we're supposed to be getting some, a um a metroid prime trilogy collection for, for the for the switch i and know just, and i guess something that's hard to implement is just you know we're, we're waiting here for some kind of official word nintendo i am literally throwing money at you in Boy, I will, <laughs> dude oh my gosh that game i would love to re to revisit and see how fast i can do uh any time completion speed run in that game i would love to go back i like, see whenever that please. comes to switch i would love to see you uh play through that on here dude uh, heck on yeah heck yeah um next to star wars rogue squadron um the metroid prime trilogy those three games were no, it, it it just made the the series because obviously we see it in two D platform and you know Super Nintendo and the NES, but only this time in a first person view. And you guys know I like first person shooter games. This took it for me to the next level and stuff. The other M does not count. That was Ninja Gaiden. That was Ninja Gaiden in 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 that game. But we're not gonna talk about that. That didn't exist. But other than that, I know the team's working hard. I don't expect to see anything new until probably when E3 comes out. Jokes aside, with I know we're calling it lowercase e, but uh, can't I'll say wait. Either, this, either this year or next year we'll see something. I I, I worth the wait. Maybe Star Fox, folks, but meh, I can't complain. Next, <laughs> next, uh, we'll we'll be conti- continue to show down memory memory lane. But this time we were talking about the the big 20th anniversary of the PlayStation Two. Oh man! Twenty years, twenty years since that 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 big fat brick came came into our house. <laughs> oh my gosh! Before we fooled teachers in high school that the slim was a textbook or a laptop, my god! I mean, when when they put out the slim, that that, that thing could get away with being a little pamphlet. Yeah, it did. It did. It did help. <laughs> oh my gosh! So, so, so I'm making make a little challenge for you guys before we. Uh, going to this, so obviously there's like tons of games that we've all uh, loved and enjoyed on, on the PS2. Oh, here we go. PS2. But I want I want want to see if you guys can limit down to like to just three games. Oh, three be, games. Be easy. I played like three games. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Like, um... like, like, like if, if if you can limit to just playing three games on the PS on the PS2 in, in perpetuity, like what what would they be? Um, you want to go first, Big John, or me? Um, okay, so when it comes to the PS2, the first game that comes into mind, um, 
for me, for myself, and uh, it has to be time the Time Splitter series. But out of all the three Time Splitter games, Time Splitters Three: Future Perfect is my number one. Um, I've uh, played that game multiplayer with uh, with um, Chris, and uh, we go way back because that's how we. Because me and Chris, shout out to Takiwara, we've been friends and we've been we're, we're teammates and we're, we're brothers actually to this day love you man and shut up because i know if he's listening to this on youtube and he will he'll, he's gonna comment later on the the comment post saying i'm the goat i'm leet right right big john <laughs> <laughs> and, um but time splitters feature perfect is because because due to the fact that it, that game is so close to us because next to, to the next time i'm gonna announce because that's when we start playing first person shooter games against each other you know same screen none of, none of that online stuff yet i mean uh-uh but uh we went head to head on time splitters and we played against bots we played with bots we played 1v1 each other we would make fun of each other we would just like shoot each other with all these futuristic guns like old school carbines to futuristic neon guns futuristic mm-hmm. sorry futuristic um I, forgive me um i remember we both laughed because i told him cuz there's an announcer in the game when you make a kill like first kill like two kills <laughs> remaining like right I and love both, actually. I'm gonna get in trouble probably, and I and this is in the game. If you guys don't believe me, look up the the YouTube clip of Time Splitters Future Perfect announcer, and it's real. Um, if you kill an opponent with using melee, I told Chris do it to a bot or or me. It doesn't matter. Just listen to him, and he's a like, why you're gonna laugh. So he he killed a bot with you know melee punches and kicks only, right? Like like judo chop, like awesome powers. He killed it. He killed the person, and the announcer goes, Qua! <laughs> and it's like so bad. Oh, wow. And it, it was funny. And he was like, No way. And we were laughing. And because that game, it, it brought it, I've again. Never heard that. That's dope. It, it's, it's, it's hilarious. Like, when, after the stream, I'll, I'll give you, I'll show you the clip and I'll tell you what time, what the, the time mark is. Right, right. And because from there, I, I sort of knew Chris better. Like, because of the ps2 obviously right mm. and you know we started and you know we started competing with each other and against each other and when the ps3 came out with well, a different story i know but i believe time splitters was the first game that we you know bonded over as like best friends and stuff and it turned to a brotherhood and look where we are now playing and stuff for the lunch possible vacation sometimes playing modern warfare every time he comes in he says i'm the goat Follow me on twitch.tv slash Takiwara. I'm like, I hate you so much. So, that's one game um, that will always be dear to me. Uh, the second game, and this... Oh my god. This game takes... And I wish Larney was here. Larney, Larna 60 was here with me to share the story. The Burnout series. Um, and oh, yeah. if I can say this, Matt, to fit, is it okay if I can link two games into one? Because it's pretty much the same concept. Uh, all right, all right. I'll, I'll Are you it. sure? I'll allow it. <laughs> Burnout three or Burnout Burnout three takedown or Burnout Revenge. Either of those two, because mm-hmm. I know it's the same concept. However, it's different. But that's brought our. Revenge was the one. Revenge was the one that introduced uh, checking, right? Yeah, when you could check people in the back and just shoot them like a shotgun and stuff like that into other yeah. people, like a slingshot. Like Chris and Blake hated me. Shout out to Blake, aka oh god, Chef Boy or Clutch, because <laughs> we would play. Clean. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. He would. We would be over people. Like we would dominate, and. Um, fun story about that because you know with checking for those who don't know it's called traffic checking when you hit either incoming traffic from behind you can hit that car and hit it to another person either in front of them or behind them depending on where they are and if you're good like myself you know all day it's 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 like sniping and stuff (laughs) you know all day anyways i'm gonna stop but um (laughs) the that was another competitive game me and my friends and stuff and two quick stories number one i mean thanksgiving 05 i believe i remember going to chris's house for thanksgiving and then i was like all right cool let's eat and stuff you know we, we just we're about to you know 
play let's play a little bit of burnout before we before we uh eating stuff while dinner's getting ready i was like all right sweet and we all did i was with his cousins and stuff i was with his sister aika aka the shadow fox and you know we were playing back and forth we were like okay this is dope oh yeah they're awesome and stuff like oh recently i got you oh no seven like it's intense because the game is like super fast like Mm-hmm. like anything can happen because you don't know when you're gonna hit the finish line you don't know who's gonna get to the amount of takedowns first it, it, the list goes on i remember beating chris one time and during the match dinner there was like dinner's ready guys you're we like okay i beat chris i was like got you chris let's go time to eat and you know what this dude does Ah, uh-uh, man what Sit down. You ain't eating until I win. I was like, oh, my Lord. We're never going to. So I just, like, stayed in the back. Like, all right, Chris. Dude, it's Chris. What do you think? Come on, Big John. You and me both know this guy. Let's go. (laughs) We both know how competitive he can be. Like, come on. Did you get to eat that night? Yes, I did. Because I just, I, I, I know I lost on purpose. No, he knows. He can redeem himself in the comments on YouTube. I don't care. He knows, like, I did all purpose, like, dude, I'm hungry, Lechon's on the table, and, you know, that, that food is looking great, it's gonna get cold till you win against me, I'm gonna stop. Anyways, but, I mean, the second story, that's when it took it to the top, this is where Larney comes in and Blake, so, apparently, this is where Burnout 3 hits, and this is where checking cannot happen, you cannot hit cars from behind to get other people, Right. Larney was in the bottom three and Blake was number one. And Chris was there with me. You can ask Chris for proof of this. It was me, Chris, Camille, um, Brian, shout outs to them, shout outs to Panay and Sane, I know she, or Camel, my other sister, and Ika. And, you know, Blake was going head to head against Larney. And it was intense because somehow Blake was in the lead by, I think, seven cars. And for takedowns, guys, because in order to win takedown, you need mm-hmm. to take down cars and take down enemy players or, or the other player. Apparently, I don't know what happened, but it felt like the Patriots versus the Falcons in that Super Bowl. Larney did the nastiest comeback. I don't know what happened, but she kept on getting triple takedowns, like instant, instant, instant. And Blake was getting takedowns, but he couldn't get in the right angle to take down cars. And he kept like hitting columns, oh. which was bad. Because if you keep damaging your car, people in the burnout series, especially during takedown matches, it's going to affect you. And if you damage your car badly, you're done. It's game over. And whatever you get in takedowns, that's what you get. Right. I don't know what happened, but somehow Blake got like 10... And Larney got 15. And we were like, what? It said, player one lost, player two wins. Blake was like, aw. And you see Larnis like, yeah! Me, Chris, Ika, Brian, we were like, whoa! (laughs) We were like, we we, we felt like super hot fire. We were the original super hot fire. I'm telling you. We were like, oh, snap! (laughs) And almost, and... Chris was like, oh no, roasted, done. I was like, oh my God. I was baffled, bro. I was like, no way this dude just, he choked. I was like, that was the biggest choke ever in burnout. You had a seven car lead and you let this person, oh my God. Like he was like, oh, I, oh, oh, oh." he kept doing that for the rest of the night. And the Burnout series is forever, yeah. Um, no, no, burnout, Revenge, and Takedown. Don't, together. I'm sorry. Together. Um, double pack that you can't find in America. So there you go. What, what's your number three? My number three has to be... Uh... Oh, crap. <laughs> um, I gave you time. Yeah, I think I'm done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no but um, I, I think those two f- forever because... um. Three, it can be anything because that's the problem because it had so many games that you just, you just can't pick just three alone. Like I, 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 I just don't know how to fathom. I think it has to be probably Shadow of the Colossus because, oh no, ah, uh-uh. God of War 1, God of War 1, because that was the first Ooh. PS2 game. My father would sit next to me and literally watch me play through it. And I would have memories of, and I got this in Delaware 
no tax when they got to the greatest collection i was like pops got a war and he was like okay cool let's let, let's get it and he got so interested in the story and he was you know even to this day he's with us playing while we're playing games with interesting stories he would watch us play and god of war was one of those titles uh i remember just him because i was having difficulty and i had to reset you guys remember that wall puzzle that you had to solve and you had that crank that you had to turn it and stuff like that it's it's like tetris like greek tetris (laughs) not for my dad though not for my dad though Oh. First time, I was like, "Pop, I'm gonna load it back up and stuff." So I turned it off and stuff like. I was like, "Okay, let me turn it on." So I, I went. So I was like, "All right, pops, what do you got?" And he was like, "Okay, turn the T piece, put it on the rolling column, turn it, okay, put the square piece, put it on the far left, put it right." I was like, "Okay," and put that last piece over there. Oh wow! I was like, "What the? Hey, <laughs> if you play Tetris, I can too." I was like, "Well, shoot, okay, that's." <laughs> That got me, but fuck. yeah, I mean, he he was with me when we beat Ares. He was with me when we beat the Hydra, and I I can't cheat again with Burnout series, but from two then three, he was he was with me, and from that on, from that point on, it just felt like the roles have changed because when I was little, when he would play Super Mario World, I was watching him, and having that moment with my father and stuff. It, it it just made me happy. So even to this day, don't play yet without me. Yeah, sure, pops. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah, those are my three games for uh for the PS2. Sorry that took so long, Matt, Big John, but it's all good. that's it's important. That was important to me. What you got, man? So uh, throw the Big John says since I like he he had a three already. Well, it's really gonna be two and then one for my brother because we were like mm-hmm. we were like connected. <laughs> yeah. So the first one is gonna be a uh, a game I got out of state. I was at a convention like years ago, and uh, well, first of all, I mean, let me explain how I worked hard for my PS2. I grinded for that view. I was like <laughs> in the streets making them making them dollars. Work with my dad on that delivery truck in DC delivering anything from like Japanese toilets to. Yeah, you told me that yeah, story last up. night, dude. Yeah. yeah. Bags of coffee beans. <laughs> bags split open in the middle of the street. Oh. <laughs> I, bought that, I bought my PS2 refurbished. Refurbished. It still works. Still got it. It's to my right in its glory. And uh, mm-hmm. also, I didn't know people didn't know that you could turn the little logo on the, the drive. On the, on the side drive. of it, yeah. I was like, how you know that, man? I mean, not many people really mess with it. I think that's I why was it was definitely mess with it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Oh wait, did I break it? Oh no, this, this it does this." <laughs> yeah, that 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 way, is, you know, the logo is always facing right side up, no matter yeah. if you have it uh, flat or on the side. Yeah. So yeah, the first game was, you know, my list is Super Dragon Ball Z, which I think is better than all the Budokai. Super games. Dragon Ball Z, okay. Super Dragon Ball Z was made by somebody that worked on Street Fighter, so it implemented combos. Oh, yeah, true, so, like, yeah. You had to use a combo to go Super Saiyan, which I thought was, I thought it was fun. And, like, the cell shading, and you get to be Chi-Chi in there, like, she fought with the Banjo <laughs> fan. You can, like, customize your character, so let's say your trunks, you can change the color. So one of my favorite trunks is, is uh, he got a red jacket, and he has, like, a, I want to say it's an Odachi, like, uh, kind of like what Sephiroth has. Mm-hmm. Or you have like a a capsule corp beam saber, which I think is so cool. <laughs> it is so cool. That game is still fun to play, dude. That sounds I awesome. Wish, I wish they made another one. Like it's so the game is, of course, it was like built for arcade. So I was so shocked when I saw something like this. So it just goes from, uh, it's like the final boss is Cell, which was weird because Boo is in the game. I think. And I'm like, how does it end? How is he the final? I guess he's like, I guess popular. This little tournament. But it, it it's interesting game. that you picked that since that, that's actually like one, one, one of the series that I don't hear many people talk about. It is so, it is, it is so fun. The music is good. Like, I even have some of the songs as like, uh, as like notification sounds on my, on my Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I lo- like, I love that game. Like, I know everybody loves, you know, Budokai, but it's like Super Dragon Ball Z, you can't sleep on it. It's a really good game. 
And I should like play that again some more. Like it's like right here, collecting dust, but it's here. And I still got it. You didn't get that um that converter. I look, I have it. I got it. It's hooked up. Oh, sweet. All right. <laughs> yeah. <Whoa. laughs> I just need to get another PS2 controller or two because I don't even know where the one I have is. <laughs> but I do. Okay, but I do have, which will segue to my next game, Dragon Quest Eight. I I love that game. Mm. My aunt asked me, "Hey, what's yeah. Christmas?" I said, "I play Dragon Quest Eight. I mean, I'm, I was. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. Why didn't you say that last night at the oh, damn it. No, I wanted to save that for now. Oh, that's good. You did good, man. You did good. <laughs> so, like, as soon as everybody finished Oh, game, man. So, everyone finished opening their garbage presents because I clearly got the best card. Wow, Big John. <laughs> I started playing Dragon Quest 8. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I still haven't beaten it because I just don't want uh, the end. Like I'm I'm at the end and I just don't want to. I don't want to. I'm look, game. Yeah, okay. That game, that game came out in like 2006. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like right at the end. Like I literally went into the final castle in the sky, and I'm just like, you know what? I'm fine. I'm gonna beat it. I will. Just like I beat. Dragon. You sound like me with Battlestar Galactica. No, oh just, no. <laughs> I love Dragon Quest Eight so much. I just can't. I don't want it. To, I don't want it to be over yet. <laughs> Even like I, I, I completely understand that feeling. <laughs> Why do I get the feeling when a remaster comes out for the Switch or anything like that? You will never beat it, dude. You know what's funny? I bought it on the 3DS. I had it on the 3DS. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah, the one has like extra stuff. Yes. <laughs> Did you beat that oh, one? No. <laughs> like, good lord, man. Okay. I have to, but I just. Ooh, boy, I can't. No, no, you don't have to. Take your time. Take your time. Oh, man. But yeah, so, so the controller, right? I have a... Shout out to Pandora's Cube, because I've, I've been going there since... Ooh, I've been going to Pandora's Cube a long time in College Park. Shout so, out to uh, Ragesh and everyone and all the staff, because yeah. we know that. I don't go in there often anymore, like as much as I used to, but when I do show up in there, it's like, yo, I got something to show you. You might like this, so... He went up back and he brought up the uh the PS2 controller that's the slime. Ooh, I had, I bought yeah. it. That he, one he knew. Yeah, yeah I have it. <laughs> I haven't so even opened nice. it yet, but so nice. I, so that's, that's a collector's item right now. Yeah, I have it. I want I, I want to get the Huey one for the Switch, but that thing is that's a lot. But I got the one for PS2. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if I'm ever gonna open it, but uh it's nice. <laughs> Save that for your savings, bro. Yeah, you right. <laughs> No oh, man. So what's, so what's your uh, your third game? So my third game is a game that I just love watching my brother play, and that was a uh, Dark Cloud, which is an amazing. Yes. Game. Dark Cloud is so good. All the level five love up in here. Yeah. Yup. And even also when I was in Kentucky, when I bought Super Dragon Ball Z, I bought him Dark Cloud too, which was nice, but it it just it wasn't as like hype as Dark Cloud, I think. Right. My boy Tone, mm, put him in Smash right now. <laughs> Tone for Smash. <laughs> not, definitely not a big enough guy character. I don't think yeah, many people want to know who he is. If man, he showed Tone, up. Tone is a Tone is a G man. Like they're, every time brother. They're gonna need another like fifty minutes tutorial on him, like they did for Terry. <laughs> yeah, for real. Dark, like Dark Man, I just love like the all the all the music in that game was really good too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think is it the same compo- No, it's not the same composer as Dragon Quest. There's someone else for Dark Cloud. I don't remember who, but um, I don't. I know he he worked on the Professor Layton games though. That's for sure. I don't remember, remember the guy's name, but like I know I know his, his Layton stuff was like Tomi, like Tomohito Nishi, Nishiura Nishiura. Yeah, yes, that's him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all his games like 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 yeah, really yeah, really chill. Cool. Yeah, like the the whole soundtrack is just a banger. Like that's that is the vibes. Dark Cloud. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up. Jesus, right. dude. My brother booted up. I was like, whatever I was doing. I was like, huh, Dark Cloud. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> wow. All right, so 
Uh, Aerosol, your turn. When it, when it comes to uh, the PlayStation 2 classics. Hey, um, mm, so classic PS2 games. Um, my first one is actually, I think this is kind of like random because this isn't something I feel like anyone would guess that I would play, but Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Oh, <laughs> hey, wow. Hey, man, I'll tell you how uh, to have the music. Oh, yeah. It it did. Oh my god! Like that. I feel like that's one of the main reasons why I played it. Because like obviously I had no idea who any of these skate people skaters were. Um, like I feel like I only even got into the whole thing because my brother did. Like, and that's on. It's it's funny how like a lot of my passions. It's like I'm really just there to be like a cheerleader for my brother, and then sooner or later, oh no, I really actually like this a whole lot. Um, <laughs> so Tony Tony Hawk was like one of the first ones. Uh, one of one of the first uh, PlayStation games. I I think I actually remember playing um willingly and happily and like by myself without him being there bob bird quest was my was my uh, uh character almost every single time loved that guy mm-hmm. um and it was just uh, it was just so much fun i loved listening to all of the music um i was a big fan of pod and i think like they had like two or three songs on the playlist um shout out to pod because they're still awesome to this day payable um, on death yeah so um Which that was always a lot of fun us? Um, I think it was the fourth, it was the third or fourth one. Okay. If I recall correctly. Um, yeah, I think four. Cause I, maybe. cause I, we, we played it, we played it on the PlayStation as well when, um, PlayStation one was out. Mm-hmm. I do remember that. Um, so that was a lot of fun to play and it's just, you know, you're just skating around doing crazy nonsense. Like I tried to do a lot of the custom moves and, you know, I was trying not to be that one girl who's just like, I'll just do ollies all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I was like, I mean, they, they rack up points though. They rack up points though. Yeah. They do, but you know what? I really wanted to do that. What was it like, Christ in the Sky or something? Yeah, Christ there, Christ, Christ there. there is the best. Christ there, there we go. Listen, I was literally killing Bob every single time trying to do this Christ there. <laughs> <laughs> and it oh, like um, every single time I got it, and I think that that's important. Shout out mm-hmm. to Alex stopping by on the chat. What's good? It's a Trap Productions. What's good, my man? We're yo, just. Yo. Yo, yo. We're just discussing uh, our stories about the PlayStation 2 since it's the 20th anniversary, right, uh, 20th, Matt? Yep. 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 Yeah, we talk about Tony Hawk. Yep. You know, we talk about Tony Hawk. We are, yeah. Yep. That's so. Aerosol here. That's like one of my. That's one of my favorite PS. Uh, PS2 games is Tony Hawk. Yeah. Hey. Um. The second one. So, uh, correction, actually, Matt, because we had talked about this, I think, over break. Um, I do love Spyro, but actually I was playing Spyro on PlayStation. I was not playing Spyro on uh, PS2, but I was watching my brother play it because, again, here I am just being a nice little cheerleader. Um, but no, it was it was good bonding, and I, I do love Spyro. I loved the fact that you could play, um, I think it was, um, oh man, it's the one where you can play Cinder. Um yeah, the name I'm not sure because I have the Legend of Spyro. Game. The Legend of Spyro. That was yeah, it. Legend of Spyro. So yep. That's the one where you can play Cinder. So that was really cool for me because I'm just like, yes, it's not just Spyro. More dragons because yeah, mm-hmm. I'm just a big fan of fantasy and dragons in general. So that was a lot of fun. Um, oh, cool! First game he played was Tekken Five. Hey, that, that was an, I, I went to the arcade for that. I went to the arcades for that over in. Uh, my local very laundromat. Cool, very cool. <laughs> um, and then I think uh, for me, number three would honestly have to be Kingdom Hearts. Of course. When it made sense. Anyways. <laughs> I, I really, I gravitate I gravitate towards uh, games that have good music. And you know that I was listening to Simple and Clean like 24-7. <laughs> I'll have to admit, everyone to this day, when the, the remastered came out, Endercore Collection, we're now ugly singing that song now, right, Aerosol? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Going oh, off key. It's not, it's not cute. I, first of all, I don't have a cute singing voice. I know this, and I own this for what it is. But let me tell you right <laughs> all now. All right, let me just like, say that's a lie. We we did carpool karaoke once, me and Aerosol. She can sing. Don't stop. Why are you gonna be like that? No, come on, stop. You are allowed <laughs> your opinion with your brother. Oh my brothers. gosh! I love you. Wow. wow. I love you You're generous because I'm not allowed no dang opinion. What? <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> oh man. Kingdom Hearts, doll. Yeah, that's uh, the PS2. That allowed us to play the Final Fantasy VII remake, right, Matt? I'm gonna stop. That was a lie. Oh boy! <laughs> Listen, simple, simple and clean was lit. 
both yes. Japanese and English version. Mm -hmm. And you know damn well I tried to sing the Japanese version and I can't speak a lick of Japanese. Wow. <laughs> wow. It's never this. pretty when I sing it, but I love to sing it. Oh man. Matt well, that's me, quick foot to the point. Mm hmm Matt, I know you got come on man. We all shared our stories. What you got, man? So so uh for the record, obviously, um, I didn't make it a point to you guys as well, but obviously, you know, these games are not like in any order. It's, you know, our, yeah. our three favorites. But, yeah, um, yeah. So, so first, of, first of course, since it's been so long and it needs to come back in some way, please somehow, whatever God I need to play first to get another proper edition of this game. But um, uh, my first pick, of course, goes out to Def Jam Fight for New York. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. yes. I feel that. I feel. That. Uh, cause, cause it, it was around the time I like, you know, I in general I started getting into uh, fighting games. So due to Def Jam stuff was was definitely new to me. I do remember in, um the fir the first game Vendetta, so it was, it was more wrestling and like mm -hmm. I was get, I was losing a lot. So who's the first? Who's the first guy? Um, Pee Wee. Uh, Scar no, no, Scarface. Scarface. Oh yeah. Scarface was the first boss, and I did. Yeah. Um, at the time, I didn't realize that you could um like raise up the stats on your character. So I was constantly losing to him. I was like, what am I doing wrong here? Like like all my hits were doing nothing. And then, you know, learn about that, learn about that, started to get my character up and then rest of history from there. And then Fight for New York came out and just uh flipped the story saying, Oh yeah, you on you're on D Mob's side this time around and you got all this all this warfare stuff going on with all the all the underground fighting. But like that, that was actually you know, one one of the main things I wanted to praise about Fight for New York, the fact that um I I'll admit when it comes to fighting games, story is usually not really the strongest suit. But Fight for New York had like you know you know, you know bare uh I won't say bare bones, they had like a substantial story to to it. Like I give you readers to actually fight and stuff in this game. And um and just the tons of rappers that were able to Sign up for this game. Um, always love have, having uh, either Method Man or Red Man by my side. Yo, you think you could freestyle with Bless? <laughs> that was stop. <laughs> um, Tanisha um, says uh, this game was like the, the closest thing we've had to World Peace of all the all the different rappers we had in this game. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> um, I'll where's, add. Where's the live? Can't... Shout out to my uncle Bone Crush. <laughs> <Shadow Really? Studio. laughs> what? What? <laughs> like who? Who was that? Like I, I, I love fighting um Joe Budden in the, in the game. Dude, he was <laughs> tricky Biden. though. He no, was tricky though. Cause money. let's go. No, oh man, <laughs> who's who was my favorite? Um, my sisters liked uh, cause they watched they they watched me play and they made their own characters and stuff. Matt, mm -hmm. can I take a guessing game of your your three styles? Or did you have three or two styles? Three styles. You... Yeah, go, go okay, 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 yes. okay. Muay Thai wrestling and submissions. Was it? Right, go do them again. Muay Thai, street fighting, and wrestling. Come on. Not Muay Thai. Um. What? Oh, kick that kickbox. Kickboxing. Yeah, kickboxing. Yeah. Kickboxing. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kickboxing, wrestling, and uh, street fighting. Am I right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Can you guess mine though? Can you guess mine? I mean, come on, man. You probably submission, uh, kickboxing, martial arts. Um, close. You got two of them. Um, I'm martial arts, kickboxing, and uh, street fighting. Cause okay, not submission. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, cause submissions for me were like they were effective, but they were too slow. Cause you have to be careful. But I yeah, it... submissions in the game were like like basically playing the waiting game. I think my sisters love like when I when I was playing with Crazy Legs or Lil Flip because of course Sean Paul mm -hmm. Sean Paul out of nowhere Sean, you know? Sean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. and they like crazy because Larnie because she does a little bit of b b girl b girl um, break dancing stuff sometimes mm -hmm. she liked Crazy Legs for the speed and the quickness because you can throw fakes and stuff and lower oh, kicks true, that you yeah. cannot that you cannot hit and she says like the dude likes to mix it capoeira that's a little bit quicker but you have to rely on sean paul for the heavy capoeira stuff and like with the kicks right. that he had i was like what the heck and 
Larnie's training dummy when she played the game had to be uh, uh, Masa and the Dragon House. That's her favorite map in the entire game. But continue, Matt, because this... Oh, man. Remake this, EA. Come on now. <laughs> God, I, I, I would love a remake for this game, but I know it would be like a licensed nightmare. Getting all yeah. those rappers and all those songs to sign back up. All these yeah. friends to get back in. And I would, I would love to, for there to be some kind of uh, new game, which would be real cool. So, you know, some kind of Def Jam World Tour, go, you know, some kind of yeah. commentary for like all, you know, the old school rap and current rap and all that stuff. And delete that hot mess we call icons. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. God. Yes. We, we, need, we need revenge for that. Oh, my gosh. They had the rappers and the stars, but the star. Oh, kick- the idea was there, but. <sighs> anyway, we, anyway, we don't talk about icon. We don't. We don't. We don't. We don't, we don't. Keep going. Yep. So on, on to my number two. Um, very very obvious one. We talked about plenty here. Um, uh, so uh, was it around two thousand seven ish. Hanging around my, my friend Rodney, aka Foreign English. Shout, shout out to him. You know, check out his music on Spotify. Got to hey. take the shout out there. Hey, and nice. um, so around the time we um started hanging out, went over to his place, um, and uh, he, was, he was showing me this game, and he was absolutely sure I would love, and uh, it, it turned out to be none other than Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, remember, remember watch, watching him play, he was on the number 15, the one that has, like, the um the, 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 the blade in his hand, you gotta, like, go across the bridges, and, yes. like, I was just amazed by how, you know, the, the size comparison between, you know, the the care of the wander and these just these huge behemoths and i was just basically watching them play until um uh to the end since number 16 was right there and wander for smash (laughs) (laughs) he has like like no moveset (laughs) i know i'm sorry (laughs) um, uh it's it's interesting for someone like me considering you know you know i'm technically watching the end of this game with, with all, all the theatrics and stuff you would think that you know oh i know the ending there's no re- reason for me to like go seek this game out but even you know you know watching him take down this gigantic tower size 16 colossus and watching the ending of the game i still want to like like hey give me the control let me let me take a, a run through this Get and it, Matt. From, from from there from there it's history um I think I got to n- n- maybe number three or four in that session, mm-hmm. but I think a couple of days later, I definitely made sure to get a top, get a copy of the game for myself. And 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 from from then on, it it, it became one of my one of my top five of all time, all time. So, the last game is what did I put for last? Oh yeah. Um, Technically bouncing off uh one of your, your picks, Greg. My, my number three is God of War two. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. um uh played through the original game back in the day. It it was it was definitely fun, but I felt like there was stuff missing. I think um it was just the fact that there wasn't enough of the boss battles. Cause, cause the, the first game is fun that it is. It only has like honestly, what's the three boss battles? Because it's Ares, yeah, Ares, the Minotaur, the Minotaur and, and um, the Hydra. What's the third one? What's the third the, one? The Hydra. The Hydra yeah, was considered yeah, the boss. Beginning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We had like those those three. The rest was just um, go, going through the the different type of enemies and all the puzzles and of course learning about Kratos' backstory. But um, getting the God of War two, uh, you know, you know, you know, one one of the fact that we uh cracking the story up by dealing with Zeus in the very beginning. Yeah. Um, all, all the different uh, upgrades you get. Um, run into the, the the various other failed heroes of Greek mythology. And just the, the upgrades to the, to the combat system was like, it was just an all-around fantastic action game. Um, and really the only downside is just the fact that it, you know, they, they, they purposely wrote it to just end on a cliffhanger um, until God of War 3 came around. But outside of that, it was, I felt it was one of, like, the most perfect, um, well-played, perfectly paced um, action games out there. And 
every now every now and then I find myself going back to it just to uh, just ju- just to play through the action again. Man, like I think and it's twenty years, and we're already here at the PlayStation Four, and a couple months. Not the PlayStation Five. Yeah, a couple months we're gonna hear more information on the PS Five. It, we came a long way. We came oh, a absolutely. long, long way. I know it's hard asking for remasters for PS Two games. I know some games are. It, it it's been slowly getting there because you know we all like to go back in time, but at the same time remind rising video game players like hey this game came out before you were born and stuff oh but on this console now you have a chance to play it mm-hmm. i just hope that i just hope it gets remade because like we want them to have the same reaction as we did like yo this game is sick yo without this game you wouldn't even have this game like and, and <sighs> some, of, some of these instances you know we don't even need a a, a remake just either a, a, a slight remaster or at least just access to those games, because if if the if the PS Five was able to get the uh, the the amount of backwards compatibility about backwards compatibility that we're getting with the uh, upcoming Xbox Series X, oh, that'd be a game changer, honestly. They can get my money on that. Being, being able to play the entire PlayStation catalog on one system like that. I don't even need to see like what's what's going on long state. That's a done deal right there. I will literally throw my PS4 out the window. <laughs> <laughs> you dude. Just, and just my up, PS3, like what? Just up your upload your saves first. Upload your yeah, saves first. Yeah, right, also. Right. Hey Matt, pretty much we can take that line even though it wasn't for the PS2. Step your game up. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Shoot. Step your game up, Marcus. PSP. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Uh, the future's getting bright. I mean, I mean, what we're gonna be talking about next? Oh, jeez, it, it's gonna oh, get yeah. even brighter. Oh yeah, Matt, would you like to begin with that? So, so uh, speaking of the topic of PlayStation, our next story is about the uh, recent trailer that dropped for Ghost of Tsushima. Um, uh, the story trailer has a basically gives a, a concrete look at what the story is actually about. Uh, and on top of that, we finally, finally get a release date for a game. Man, I'm poor it's again. A... I am poor it, again. The game looks so good. Oh my god! It's like, it, See, I'm it's... budgeting for it. You should do that. Are yeah, you I mean, gonna? Who's gonna stream it? It's the biggest. If question. you stream it, it's, like, it's, it's gonna come down to availability. Honestly, I'll be honest with you guys. I cannot Basically, stream this game yeah. because I know my dad's gonna say, "Put it in the living room." So we can all watch. Oh no, yeah, that's, oh, that's fine. You go, you go do that, Greg. Yeah, go ahead, take it, guys. Because this is beautiful. Like, and we were just talking about the PS2. These guys started off with Sly Cooper. Look at them now, Sucker Punch. Oh my no, gosh! Sucker... A long way to Sly Cooper. Oh my yeah. gosh! Yeah. I can't wait to see the Sly oh, Cooper now, and the infamous, right, Big John? Like, that, yeah, the, the Easter eggs for those two games in this game. I cannot wait. Yo, Big John, I'm pretty sure he, like, it would probably be some kind of unlockable Sly Cooper inspired samurai outfit. Oh, that would be clean. I would Shoot. love that. I would like a red samurai outfit or a blue samurai outfit to feature the good or, or the bad guy side uh, from the infamous games. Right, Aerosol? Uh, that would be really cool. That. Uh, that would be pretty <laughs> legit. I'm oh. not even going to lie. This game looks so good. Tenchu, Stealth Assassin's Sake. I'm joking. Keep going. <laughs> just, oh, man. It's no, I mean, I mean, there, there is some, like, Tenchu inspired stuff. As, as you see those, those staff sections right there. Oh, man. It I just love that he's my favorite kind of hero because he's like, screw your nobility. Screw your sacrifice. I'm here for the vengeance. Yes. Be petty, bro. Be bad. Kill I mean, I mean, I mean, they straight up say in the trailer, you, you, you know, you know, common, common trope with Japanese people, you know, you know, everything they do is for honor. He, yeah. and he's pretty much like, uh, yo, screw honor. Yeah, I'm in yes. I'm, I'm, I'm in this for me. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and that's so that, that is so true. But I, it's oh man, it's just so satisfying. He's, he's, like he's I, re- I respect here, honor. I respect honor. I respect tradition. But you know what? Fuck it. Excuse my language. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta do you. Yep. 
Exactly. <laughs> so let me do me. Let me kill all them mofos. Jesus, <laughs> this game is. Oh, I cannot wait. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. <sighs> that yeah, they left the release date uh, June of all, of all times. June 26th. That collector's edition is so oh, tempting. I did see that yesterday. Yeah, you saw the mask, right? Uh, I, I, should, I forgot to text you about it, bro. I want... It's oh, totally fine. Gosh. I didn't even want to go to the beach. Are you serious? <laughs> forget, forget summertime. Forget summertime norm normalities. Don't I'm do that. Inside. Don't. But, 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 but Arizona, beach episode. Ooh. All right. Okay. Mm. <laughs> okay. Like, hot sand. I'll do it for y'all. <laughs> We're make you know, we're trying to make that work because I know a, I'm not a fan of sand, but I do like walking on sand, like barefoot on sand. I like the nighttime yeah, sand, but during the day I'm the one that wears tennis shoes on the on the beach, straight up. I don't understand people like you. Why? Yeah, what is because I wow hot wow. Sand. So I just keep my shoes on. Get, but then the sand gets in your shoes. Not the way sand I walk. gets everywhere. You can't Not escape even. it, man. I can't Matt, would that. you like to discuss the special editions for this game? <laughs> oh my gosh! First, first things first. This is a very important we, conversation. We need to get you like some uh, some sandals or flip flops or something. Because <laughs> that would probably help a lot it's more. Hard. I got I got huge feet. I'm cursed. <laughs> We will we will find a way, buddy. I know plenty so anyway, of people with huge um, feet. We we find a way. <laughs> so anyway, um, with the trailer announced, they uh they also announced there's three different editions for the game. Um, uh, well, actually four technically. Um, uh, because there's of course the, the the big basic set, which is just the game itself. Mm -hmm. Um, and you got the digital deluxe version, which comes with the uh digital version of the art book. Uh, dynamic theme, director's commentary, and some skins for both both um, the care for for Jim, main character, and his horse. It looks like. Mm -hmm. um, nice. see, got... I have it on screen for everybody. So, yep. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Congrats, yeah. The special edition, the physical special edition, which is uh, steel book, uh, digital mini art book, and the DLC I uh, mentioned before. Um. Sweet. And, and and then they just uh, go to the level with the collector's collector's edition. Oh my god! It looks so <laughs> sick, bro. I want it. How much Starting is that? From, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't go over the prices. So the um, uh, both the digital deluxe edition and the special edition are each uh, seventy bucks, mm -hmm. while the collector's edition here is one hundred seventy. I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> I could do it, yeah. dude. I'm dude, I, I'm I would, I would waiting. find a way to budget for that. I'm telling you right I, now. Okay, so what you're trying to tell me, one of us is has to do an unboxing video. Listen, I, I think Big John just announced himself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look, I will get that. I will get that and that tripod to hold my phone up, boy. I'll, I'll do it, dude. Let's do it. <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh! I gotta ask Denise. Oh god, that means I gotta get two of these things. If Denise wants, oh well, I'm poor guys. Well, nice knowing y'all. I will do this when, I, in June. Listen, I, 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 can, I can put some money yeah. on the side. Yeah, but the question is when and where. That's the only the question. Six. No, 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 no. When can we reserve it? Like now, because that's the question. True. Because right. um, Are you not up for um, pre-order yet. No, because I tried. We everyone tried going on um Amazon and stuff like that, and uh, they said keep track on everything on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook accounts for uh, for Sucker Punch the studio, and as well as the Ghost of Tsushima um official site and yes alex so i'm going to announce this now while we have the chance so obviously for this collector's edition that you guys see on your screen here for ghost of tsushima we are happy to announce and big john you said you're offering for for like, like for like content can, purposes like might, and stuff look I, I could i would want to do it but it's like if i can't like somebody else sure like who else like who, sure i and mean then it's like, we can if still do you it. don't i'll do it Cause like we have that? multiple. Like if I could, like if I could still do, it, I could still record a video. If you I feel like everyone's gonna get the same damn collector's edition. Are you kidding me? I want that mask. Like, it's not too hard. I, I thought it was gonna be two thirty. Cause <laughs> I told myself, I legit told myself, I'm not gonna get another collector's edition. 
I can't pass out on this. I the cannot last, pass down on this. I don't know why you told yourself that. I would never tell myself that. That would be a lie. Why would you lie to yourself? Um, but we will do our best to make an unboxing video for everyone here, um, and for everyone who follows the most possible publications. I am you also do in a unboxing and just be good. yeah. I also want to share this as well. I'm gonna ask Larney, aka Larnis plays. I'm not gonna say the other damn nicknames. Um. <laughs> We might do an unboxing for the very special edition Animal Crossing Switch for that's yeah. coming out later oh, this sweet. month. Okay. So that's another that's thing. That's awesome. So, so real quick, I want to interject. You know, you're, you're talking about it, you're not sure who's taking uh, pre-orders yet. So I just asked Tanisha, who who currently works at GameStop, that, um, yeah, apparently GameStop is doing pre-orders for the collector's edition for Ghost of Tsushima. So oh. get, 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 to the, get to GameStop when you can. Yeah, Wait, so I'll be there tomorrow. Yep. I have to I have to get down there anyway because I have to finish paying off Animal Crossing, so Yo, 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 can you use my, my shovel legs? Can you use my uh cell number? We'll talk off stream and um stuff like that. I'll uh I'll give you the money and stuff like that if I can't make it to a game stop sure. for safety. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you my, my cell all the details and stuff like that. We'll talk. I mean I'm like I'm getting all excited and stuff. I probably won't make it until Wednesday. Just to let you know. You can't do that with special editions and take that chance, yo. <laughs> you cannot do that, Aerosol. Come on now. He's kinda right. I'm gonna have to do it. You can't make like you have to find time tomorrow. Like after work tomorrow, after the gym, I am going tomorrow. to the I'll, game I'll, stop. I'll, well, no, not tomorrow. I would have to do it on Sunday. I couldn't do it tomorrow. Okay then. All right, because I wasn't so... joking earlier when I said I was going to be at church tomorrow. So. <clears throat> no, 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 no. It's just that you can't miss out on this. Aerosol, this is too beautiful to pass off. I'm, I, God. Oh, I feel you. I feel you. Oh, my gosh. All right. Let me June... get on GameStop.gov right now. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, please be sure to check out Ghost of Tsushima this coming June 26, 2020 for the PlayStation 4. All right, hey. Matt. What else you got? Uh, so, next news story, uh, this, this one going to uh, Entertainment News, and I'm not sure if this is going to be a series or a, a movie or anything like that, but, but either way, uh, Netflix is working with uh, Thor Ragnarok director Taika Waititi, and they're teaming up to do their own version of the classic story, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Oh, yeah, I did read about that. It's going to be so twisted. I can already tell you. And I can't wait. Yeah, I, 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 I was really talking to some, somebody about the fact that, you, you know, the the old Gene Wilder version of, of a good amount of a good amount of that stuff was uh, done in improv. And, I love that one. And Taika Waititi is known for adding uh, a bunch of improvisation to his movies. So, like, he's, he's easy going to turn this thing up to 11 in a very, very mm -hmm. weird way. Oh, heck yeah. For anyone who didn't see Jojo Rabbit, like, <laughs> this dude is wild. I love it. Y'all can't wait to see what the Oopa Loopas look like then. Right? That's what I'm saying. Mm. Oh, oh, and and Tanisha just brought up an interesting thing, considering that, um, you, you know, if, if, if we're looking at this right, at this right, um, they should be going more off the books rather than the, um, mm. uh, the previous Gene Wilder version. So there may be some, uh, which, which, and it would be more version? similar to the Johnny Depp version, right? I love that one too. When that boy took his that boy's father took the whole uh, house and left. I was like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I was <laughs> like, excuse me. <laughs> you took the whole building. You know, don't you don't you always do that to your kids? You just kind of <laughs> leave them outside, the take the house building. and leave. Left but um, <laughs> the thing is, and and you know, obviously, I got to go back and like read through the original story to see. To, Get hundred percent proof, but supposedly the original Willy Wonka in the books is supposed to be black. Huh? Wait, what? Is it because of all the chocolate? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if, if that was the case, that'd be super racist. <laughs> that, that really would be super racist. I was actually thinking. I was thinking more like along the lines of he went like trapezing through the Amazon and stuff like that, or whatever, and that's how he found the Oompa Loompas or some nonsense. And I'm like, you know what? That's something seriously like. No offense, only a white person would do. Like, that is true. like, I mean, I mean, so, no, no, no matter which version you look at, the the Oompa Loompas are definitely supposed to be some kind of indigenous. Hundred yep. yeah. percent. Mm -hmm. But um, that's really interesting. I'm I'm so I'm so curious. 
Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I have no idea like what direct you know what direction exactly they're gonna take with this, but if Taco YTT, he's he, he showed he could do uh wacky very well on the screen. So like this is hundred hundred percent up as an alley. Um, oh yeah. So far, there's yet to be any word about casting and stuff, but that makes sense considering he's in you know in the middle of working on uh the next door movie right now. So we probably yep. won't hear anything in, for like another probably another year or so. But, well, I um, can't wait to hear more, regardless. Yeah, because Go- Goma is a, is is reading like he has full control over the um uh, over the story. Oh, that makes it better. Hmm. That makes it so much better. And actually, now that I'm, I'm looking at this, there's multiple uh not with YTT, but multiple of Roy Dahl's uh books that Netflix was be working with. Uh, we 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 might be getting a a remake of Matilda in some way. Oh, that'd be good. That would be amazing. And oh, quite honestly, good. I would love for Danny DeVito to somehow still be in that. Just saying. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, no, no. Sorry, like, I'm, I'm sort of on the fence with that. But please, I would love to be proven wrong. It's just, when it comes to uh, Ronald Dahl's uh, creations and stuff, whether it's uh, Matilda and, um, of course, Willy... Was it? He, he did do Willy Wong and the Chocolate Factory, right? Charlie and the Chocolate yeah. Factory? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's... You know, I'm sorry. It's just a, like... After the Johnny Depp re- one with the from uh, Tim Burton and stuff, it was weird. It, it was sort of enjoyable. It was, but okay. it was weird. It was all right. But I like that one. knowing I mean, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is always going to be weird. That's of course, weird. It, well, yeah, because you know the book Sorry. is more it, the book is more violent than the than the. Uh, oh, hundred percent. Like, like there's a, there's a lot yeah. of more scary stuff in the book version. Yeah, it's like whew, like man. Rest in peace, kids. Anyways, but uh, it's just. <laughs> it's just I think crazy. Pieces, yeah. but, you know, it's cool. That's kind of crazy. That you it's don't like that. um really, dude. <laughs> anyway, but um, like for Taika, and this is Taika we're talking about here, and I I don't mean to um miss some of the conversation. Sorry, folks. I had to be right back real fast. Um, <sighs> we've all seen what he's done to Thor. We've all seen uh for uh. What's uh Jojo Rabbit and yeah, uh, the exactly. upcoming, even though he didn't direct, however, he's going to be appearing in the upcoming uh, movie with Ryan Reynolds, uh, Free Guy. You know, he has that whimsical, oh, yeah, yeah. he has that whimsical personality uh, when it comes to directing. So it, it's going to be interesting where he, where he, where he's going to go with I this. I mean, Free Guy works out for him since, since that's uh, both him and Ryan Reynolds, who, who also does a lot of uh, improv on set. Oh man! Mm-hmm. See, I'll, but I'll, here's I'll... my thing, though, because he's whimsical, but it's it's not like a ha ha that's so cute whimsical. Like he's he can be pretty dark. I mean, the whole time in in Thor, like there's that like five minutes where the dude is just carrying around what he believes is to be a dead body, and he's just like, yeah, oh yeah, I'm just carrying him around. Like it's cool, it's whatever. Like he he jokes on Hitler, like he's yeah. whimsical, but. It's very, very dark. What? So dark what? Dark of course you can. <laughs> oh my gosh. He, he loves dark humor, 100%. Oh. Yeah, so I think this is going to be like the most perfect kind of twisted. He's going to be playing the antagonist so in Free Guy, a jerk of a programmer for a video game, which is going to be hilarious. So. Is he the antagonist? Really. Oh, that's I, think he's the anta- I think he's the antagonist. That's like, going to be... The way... Because... He's trying to shut down the game from, I believe in the plot, from what I've heard. He's trying to make changes to the game and stuff like that that's going to not benefit the NPCs, with, you know, the, um, the main so character. So he's like the main programmer then. Yeah, he, he's the one who said, I'm the entrepreneur, the the the, 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 act, the main actor. And he's just like rapping and stuff while his workers are like looking at him like, what? <laughs> so it, it's going to be Taika... You can trust him. You can definitely trust him when it comes to uh, the, the the um the upcoming uh, remake for Ch- Chocolate Factory, and it's definitely a good time to be a Netflix subscriber with all these shows coming out and movies. Hell, I'm waiting for the Division movie to come out. So, psh, and see, see now, I'm wondering if, if you know if Netflix has access to all the Warrior Doll stuff. I'm wondering if they're gonna do uh, do another version of um James of the Giant Peach. 
Ooh, I love that. You know, um, hold it. That um, would be there, the most amazing thing ever. To add to the entertainment news, you do know it's been confirmed a bit or rumored for the uh, the live action remake of James and the Giant Peach. Really? It's happening. Yeah. No, no, oh. did not know that. Well, yeah. The, um, I now see. I've I saw the news this past Monday. See, I should have wrote a note about this. Might forgive me, team. But uh, that's cool. I'm looking for it. Keep going. But um, there has been some reports that they're going to make the live action James and the Giant Peach movie. That's it. That, that's all I know. I don't know if it's confirmed for theaters. I don't know if it's confirmed for Disney streaming platform, Disney Plus. But they say it's happening. Um, I mean, it's, not, it's not impossible to do. It's just that's going to be a shitload of, of CG if they do oh, a live yeah. action version. Oh, yeah. I mean, shoo. You know, to Literally be fair, every single one of the characters except for James. Aerosol, be honest yeah, with me. Basically. Be honest with me. James and the evil step uh, stepsisters. Aerosol. Oh, true. Be honest with me. It would be really dope as hell if that was a world for Kingdom Hearts. Like fighting the rhino and stuff like that. And... Oh, that should have been. Oh. It, okay, so here's the thing it, it, it would be cool. I don't feel like waiting 15 years for it. <laughs> see, this is what happens. It's, okay, see. Man. <laughs> Uh, Square Enix, are you listening now? I'm gonna stop. Of course they're not. Of course. Let's tag them. Let's clip this part and tag them. <laughs> but, um, I Feel can't... free. I have no shame. Uh, What'd you got, man? No, let's see. I can't find anything on like, like new news on on anything related to James and the Giant Peach. Oh, forgive me. I'm not, I wasn't trying to make fake news and stuff, but I did no, no, see no, an article okay. about I mean, it. And... I I like daydreaming, so this is a good daydream. Well, if it does happen, he, he, Matt's right. A lot of CG is going to be made, and oof, a lot <laughs> of some work. people. Some some people do it right. Some people do it right. Sometimes I have faith. We do have a question from Alex. Hey guys, tell me who you'd cast in a live action Kingdom Hearts movie? Winky oh, smiley face. Who would be your dream cast? Boy, you cut out. Oh. He said, hey guys, t- um, um, it's Trap Productions, aka Alex asked, uh, hey guys, tell me who you'd cast in a live action Kingdom Hearts movie, who would be your dream cast, Winky Smiley Face? Kingdom Hearts movie? Oh no. Oh god, oh, no. I, god I don't know. No. Oh. I would really have to do a lot of research to yeah. like get it perfect, because... I, I honestly don't know. I, I, I really I don't, don't know. I don't know a lot of these kids. Um, y'all come out with these random new names, someone's last name is... Ronan. I can't say her first name. I want to say Susie. I know that's not what it is. It's Irish. Wait, from and... um, from Girl Meets World. The you're talking about her. The the, the, oh, the who... yeah the no, main. No, that's Sabrina Carpenter. I know that one. Oh, no, 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 that's not Sabrina her Carpenter. Is, her name is Rowan. Okay, okay, right? sorry. Yes, Rowan Blanchard. Isn't it? Rowan? Yeah, Rowan Blanchard. Sorry, sorry, my bad. No, I, no, I'm talking about the, the the girl with the Irish first name and her last name. I think is Ronan. Got you. Um, you I know he passed. Anyways, I don't I, know these young people. I know he passed away last year. Um, rest in peace, Cameron Boyce. I would like to see him as uh, either Riku or Sora. At least Riku or Sora. I can see him as that. Eh, I, I could. I'd have to look at his face. Hold on. I understand. I, those I understand. It's difficult. This is a difficult question because, like, with the rising child actors on the Disney Channel or even Nickelodeon and stuff. Wait, who would you want him to be? Uh, either I don't know, maybe uh, Sora or Riku. Probably could maybe do Sora, but I could not see him as yo. Riku. I yo, I got it. I got he it. Has such a baby face. I got it. Brian Cranston as Xehanort. Yes. Wow. <laughs> yes. Yo. <laughs> you got it right. <laughs> she just me. <laughs> so I'm, I'm only I'm only saying this because you know it would totally be hilarious. I don't care who he plays, but I would just want Nicolas Cage in it. Oh what? I mean that wouldn't be trash, but like Nicolas hilarious. Cage, he, 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 Jesus. Would well, usually be one of the thirteen. Yep. Right? Actually, what's the one that, um, Hades. The, the Well, no, if you're doing Hades, keep that to James Woods. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> you're right. You're not wrong. No, no, the, the 13. Which one is the one with the um with the guitar? Because I'm feeling De- like. Demix? Perfect. Really? You want that? What? <laughs> you know who would play him? You know who would play him? 
Do you know who would play Demix, though? I would to see Brandon Uri from Panic at the Disco. I would love for him to no. play here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I would love to... I, I gotta view yes. that one. Yes, Alex, it's did... a Trap Productions. You would want to get... Um, Angelina, Angelina Jolie as Maleficent. Yeah. Yes. 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 I would. I would. Them cheekbones. They were weird, but they were cute. You know... They were weird, but cute. Yeah, the Disney princesses, like, uh, for example, um, the one who played Cinderella... Yes, I would like to see her as uh, Cinderella herself. I would like to see the Disney princesses. Uh, I don't know about Emma Watson. I didn't watch. I didn't see. Cinderella, I didn't, see, so I I didn't see Beauty and the Beast. So Emma Watson wasn't bad. And that's all. I'm so gonna you want her to be Belle? Was just ugly. I just said she wasn't bad, honey. I didn't say I wanted her to play Belle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's relax. <laughs> Breathe. Okay. <laughs> But the guy who the guy who played Gaston, I would want him to play Gaston again because like he has a face. I hate it. Evan, I mean, Luke people. Evans. Well, yes. Yeah. I'm playing. I'm playing Pete, so you already know that role is taken. <laughs> wow, <laughs> big job. Thank you I for mean, the yeah. If, if we're thinking with uh, people who are already in the Disney ecosystem, I mean, we could easily just put Tom Holland as Sora. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Actually, hold on. Going, what? going back to going back to Girl Meets World. Sabrina Carpenter, who plays the blonde chick, who's mm. Rowan's best friend or whatever. Yeah, she yeah. would be a good. Um. Oh shit! What's her name? Oh, I already lost it. What's her name? Not. Nominee. Nominee. Yes, nominee. Thank you. What? <laughs> That's okay. I'm okay with that. That's a round face. It would work, right? Who's, play, who's playing the best character, Benitas? Me? Okay, I'll play Benitas. Stop. Stop. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for the challenge question. And as much as I want to keep keep sticking to it, but it's 12 midnight, guys. And yeah. yeah. yeah, we, yeah. We, we can call it here. We got through like almost all the news anyway. All, all the big news. Um, the stuff, yeah. stuff we, we, I check and let you guys cover next week. Yeah, um, me and Big John definitely have thoughts about the Valorant uh, trailer. Um, we did break break it down. You want to save that for next week, Big John? I mean, I, I'll be happy to. Because uh, we have a lot to talk about, especially... Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, and the, the new Scoob trailer along with uh, the, the remake of The Secret Garden and a bunch Secret of other Garden trailers. Secret Garden got a remake? Yeah, Secret Garden got a remake. Yep. It came out today. Okay. And uh, the third and final trailer trailer for trolls world tour came out that movie looks so good so yeah um we'll definitely talk Lots about next that week. next yeah. week matt we will see you next month of course you'll still be here with the company but we know you're yeah, gonna be so busy this, yeah so uh, uh let, let you guys in the audience know yeah the next few weeks i will not be uh on the podcast because uh, a lot of uh, like stuff in different directions will be happening so I won't have time to be here. I'll try to make uh, at least contribute to the doc for you guys to have topics to talk about, but I will not be here physically. So the next time you hear my soothing, sultry voice will be yeah, uh, the yes. Yes. <laughs> Matt, it will be missed. <laughs> please, Matt, please, from all of us, I know I speak on everyone here and be of lunch possible publications. Do your best, please take it. Take time and take care of yourself also as well, okay, man? Please, because, you know. Absolutely. Make sure you coat yourself in a thin but durable layer of hand sanitizer. Yeah, because. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. We, like, we, okay, we, no. We, you guys we, with this hand sanitizer, please no, it's so. A, it's Y'all a joke. Yeah, I know that, but, like, you need, like, a. a I didn't buffer. say anything about that. I'll... <laughs> you need a buffer. Okay. The soap. No, I get you. For, okay. For, for the summer, I'm supposed to be working next week, like. Uh, if, if we're doing the same layer as we did last week, there's a bathroom literally right around the corner for me. Mm-hmm. So if I absolutely need to get up, I, I can just easily do that and be, like, mm-hmm. be back to my desk in a minute. Okay. So I'll, okay. I'll be fine. We, we've already talked about health uh, health concerns and stuff like that, so we should be okay. Yeah. Bird. All right, folks. Well, that's all of us here. We are heading out. Please. And uh, we didn't name our episode. Oh, crap. Oh crap! I I got, I got, I got a, some ideas I can throw your way. Yeah, I got an idea for the for the second uh, second half of it. Sure, what do you want to call it? Nintendo PlayStation Anniversary. Hey, let's <laughs> go! Yes. Looks Perfect. like we, don't worry. And uh, last but not least, guys, all current episodes of the season one 
of the Lunch Boss Podcast are fully uploaded. So Ooh, there you go, really folks. The episode 11 will be available to everybody this coming uh, next, uh, yeah, pretty much soon next week. So be sure to also follow us on YouTube and subscribe to us as well on the YouTube channel. So with that being yeah, said, guys, yeah, turn, yeah, please like those videos. Thank you for the thumbs up. And with that being said, we are the Lunch Boss Publications. We'll be back with your weekly serving next week. And uh, have a good night, everyone. Laters. Peace. Big John. Huh? No. <laughs> Don't you work on that deal on Robot Boy? <laughs> I don't even have that on. <laughs> oh, man. I uh, had it on all day. Okay. Okay. And no, we're not going to use that title. What the heck's wrong with you? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> No. no. There's a reason why JK was right under I know, that. I'm but just no. There's a reason why JK was under that. I Have a good you. night, everybody. You. See you next no Friday. The title's going to be Wash Your Buns. <laughs> good night, everyone. Later. <laughs> okay. Bye. bye. <laughs>